Look how bro MSS is. It's degenerate. I'm not. Oh my god! But this. This is. <laughs> it almost makes me laugh every single fight because I know how hard I'm fucking working for my kills. And it seems like when these guys kill, it's just like they're fucking quick, quick. It feels like they're just fucking. They're dancing while they're fucking fragging me out. Look at it! Look at it! Look! You're dead. Hey, hey, you're dead. And I'm fucking sweating. Like, I'm fucking, like, I'm lifting fucking weights trying to kill one guy. Trying to just fucking, please don't, please! Oh my god! Look! Yeah, I think you guys should stay That's on. That's all aim I think you guys should stay on controller for a Halo for now. I see! Look! Just by seeing that, I think there's no question that we should all be playing Halo on PC with controller for that aim assist because of just how ridiculous it is. I'm not even in! I'm not even aiming! I'm not even aiming! I let go of the joystick! I'm not kidding! I let go of the joystick entirely! Aiming in Halo Infinite doesn't feel good. If you play any other shooter on the market, you know what I'm talking about. Something feels off. Infinite feels sluggish and unresponsive. Hopefully, if we can keep talking about it, 343 can eventually find some of the issues that are maybe causing this. I got none! I got none! None! Fuck! Right? None! We got none! No fucking aim assist in this game! Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Infinite, where we take a critical lens to all things Halo. Although they may seem disparate, the core controls of Halo Infinite are near identical to the games of the MCC. 343 is actually quite preservationist when it comes to Halo's engine, and the DNA of the original Blam engine still persists onto the Slipspace engine. Though when Halo made the jump from the 7th gen consoles to the 8th, much of the Halo feel was lost to the x86 architecture. While Halo 4 abandoned the look of legacy Halo, it retained the feel due to how much it shared with Halo Reach. In my opinion, despite aggressive bullet magnetism and numerous other flaws, Halo 4 was the last game to feel like Halo, even if it didn't look like it. Past the 7th generation, Halo abandoned its signature playability in favor of something more cookie cutter, and many intentional decisions were overridden. In this series, we'll be looking at the differences in the hopes of reviving Halo's 7th generation splendor. When it comes to Halo Infinite's aim assist, things are only slightly different. However, these differences result in categorical changes to how gunplay handles and feels. We'll begin with a theory of how aim assist is supposed to work in Halo, because there is a design to it. Looking and moving around in Halo's play space is meant to feel free and fluid. It's only when you intentionally target an enemy do things stiffen up and land themselves more to precision. You see, Halo's aim assist actually ends up functioning as a lock-on mechanic. To make Halo's smooth, snappy, yet precise gameplay possible, the developers utilize several small features to bring the larger vision into fruition. In the Blam engine, weapon-specific aim assist comes in two categories, auto-aim and magnetism. The next two aspects actually aren't considered aim assist, but rather look-stick characteristics. Magnetism friction and magnetism adhesion are controller settings universal to all weapons while magnetism is active. The last two are constant, they don't change depending on what weapon you use. Let's talk about the paradigm, or the intention, of aim assist in Halo. The system Bungie was very deliberate in designing. As a player, upon targeting an enemy, the first thing you will notice is reticle friction or stickiness. The process of your sensitivity slowing when your reticle nears a target to make adjusting your aim more tactile. Once you pass from this aim assist field and onto your actual target, you'll notice your reticle turn red, a la red reticle range. This is the game telling you that bullet magnetism is sufficiently strong and that you are guaranteed to land a shot. The game has pre-calculated this for you continuously. The most curious aspect of aim assist is adhesion, which is the process of your reticle adhering to your target's movement. As your target moves, assuming you are moving the right stick, the game will gently but not accurately track your target's movement. I want to stress this. Adhesion is here to help keep a controller user's reticle fixed to their opponent as they move. Without it, targets would just be able to walk away from your aim, and things would feel inconsistent depending on whether your target is moving toward or away from your reticle. Adhesion is designed to keep your sensitivity speed fixed relative to your target's movement speed and direction. You'll soon see that this isn't aimbot, that the game is actually not aiming for you because of a very small yet crucial reason. Do you see how this is supposed to work? Halo's play spaces are like canvases where you're free to look wherever, but once aim assist engages, it's like changing your reference frame. No longer are you looking around, but rather selecting and discerning your target. 
A veritable lock-on system, kind of. You'll notice this most especially when it's gone, like when trying to team kill or target objects that aren't flagged as targets, like construction cones. This is how Bungie reconciled the often opposite goals of free-looking and precise aiming. Once we move on to Halo Infinite, there are a lot of changes. Bullet magnetism is reduced across the board, but the design doctrine behind it has also changed. We'll be discussing bullet magnetism and reticle design later in the series in a dedicated video. Today you'll be emphasizing reticle friction, adhesion, and the relationships they share with the player. Starting with reticle friction, or magnetism as the engine calls it, we start to see the reticle slowing field surrounding targets is reduced to its bare minimum. It's fair to say this field doesn't even exist because it does not extend past the target itself. Controller users aren't able to dynamically adjust their sensitivity speed like M and K users, so this is one of the most important features that makes controllers usable in the FPS genre. Controller users depend on reticle friction to adjust their aim and this game doesn't give it to you until after your aim is precise which defeats its purpose. Infinite doesn't help you place your shots so much as it prevents you from missing them. Remember how I said magnetism is more about usability than difficulty? Once reticle friction is basically gone, we see that adhesion starts to function in a way that is categorically different than it does in MCC. Remember how I said that adhesion doesn't work like an aimbot in MCC? This is because reticle friction, magnetism, the reticle slowing field around your targets acts as a buffer between adhesion and your target. In MCC, adhesion doesn't adhere to your targets, not initially. If a target walks past your reticle and triggers adhesion, it will do so at the edge of the reticle friction field. It is ultimately the player that has to move their aim on target. In Legacy Halo, adhesion does not track targets for you. It tracks within the space around them and will not put you on target. You still need to do that work yourself. Because the reticle slowing or friction field in Infinite is literally as tight as it could possibly be, Adhesion in Infinite does directly track your targets. This is why removing your controller dead zones makes a difference in Infinite more so than MCC. You now understand one of the biggest reasons why Halo Infinite feels different to Halo Master Chief Collection. It's because Infinite doesn't give you the resources or the space, yes the physical space, you need to conscientiously place your shots. As you move your reticle past an enemy, aim assist will jerk or briefly pause your aim, but it's not enough to actually move your reticle to where you want it. Because reticle friction and magnetism are so nominal in Infinite, this makes enemies feel smaller and further away, because they have less substantial impact on the controls. I want to say this one final time, reticle friction, magnetism, or the aim assist field is about usability, not difficulty. It makes the game more playable, not necessarily easier. When you turn down this effect like you have in Halo Infinite, not only do you fundamentally change the manner in which adhesion performs, you also directly remove controllability from controller users. You make the game feel stiff and unresponsive. This is because you directly hurt the ability of controller users to accurately and willfully discern where they want their reticle to go. Okay, so I wanted to give you a sneak peek under the hood at Assembly, which is a tag viewer for the MCC. Here we have Halo Reach, the uh, DMR, auto-aim and magnetism. Now, auto-aim is the parameter or the degree of bullet magnetism that we get. Now, auto-aim is bullet magnetism or curving bullets. It, it's easy to confuse magnetism and auto-aim, but auto-aim is what players would describe as curving bullets. So here the DMR, we have 2.25 degrees. That means when bullets reach within 2.25 degrees of our target, they will start to curve and it goes up to 20 but it starts dropping off at 10 float 32. Now float 32 is a method of, st of storing integers that computer scientists use to forward data to a program. Now auto aim and magnetism. Magnetism is the degree of reticle friction that we get. So what this means, this value 5, is that when we bring our reticle within 5 degrees of our target we will experience magnetism friction. So basically, while your reticle is within 5 degrees of your target, your sensitivity will slow to exactly 62.5% of its original value. Now, let's notice a, p a pattern here. A magnetism angle can make weapons feel clunky or agile depending on the value you have. It's a very important value for me making weapons feel unique and different. And auto-aim and magnetism 
are per weapon parameters. They change depending for your weapon. Every weapon has unique aim assist properties, and based on magnetism, this directly impacts the controls. So the assault rifle and the DMR are going to physically feel different on the controller. Now, let's notice a pattern here. Magnetism angle, 5. This is the DMR. Magnetism angle, 10. Automatic weapon. Let's go to Halo 3. The Halo 3 battle rifle. Magnetism angle, 6. The Halo 3 assault rifle. Magnetism angle, 10. We notice a trend here. Automatics consistently have twice the magnetism angle of precision weapons, meaning automatic weapons experience more reticle friction, wi a wider degree of reticle friction. Let's bring up the Halo Infinite Tag Viewer. This is an equivalent program. What we see here immediately is that the Halo 3 Battle Rifle, the Halo Reach DMR, and all of the Halo MCC games have discrete uh, unit measurements for their aim assist values. We have degrees, which is easy to understand. That's basic geometry that it's pretty intuitive for most people to understand. And then we have float, float numbers, float 32. Once we move on to Halo Infinite, we have just float straight off, straight down the board. Magnetism angle, magnetism range, auto aim range, auto aim angle. They're all in the same unit, float. Now, float values are discrete from float 32 angles. And this leads me to believe that the values here, because they're different, the aim assist system that is behind the aim assist in Halo Infinite has been fundamentally reworked from the ground up. They built it from scratch because everything is different. We have different units, we have different values. Let's look at the assault rifle and see how much magnetism that has. 0 0.11. And then we go back to the BR, 0 0.11. Now, that seems low, but again, we're in different units, so we can't assume that this is 0 0.1 angles. It's not, because, again, discrete units, discrete units, you can't exactly plug these in one for one because you will basically break the aim assist to make this game so easy that you don't even... Well, you get my point. Now, if we look at the commando rifle, magnetism angle, 0 0.1. So the BR and the Commando have the same magnetism angle. They have the same degree of reticle friction. But as we've discovered here in previous Legacy Halo games, the pattern is that automatic weapons have double the reticle friction of precision weapons. And Halo Infinite does more or less respect this. It's 0 0.11 as opposed to 0 0.1, which leads me to believe that things scale linearly that the assault rifle has 10% more magnetism or reticle friction than the commando and the BR, but the commando and the BR are both being treated as precision weapons. I think you're starting to understand why the commando is admittedly described by 343 themselves, a loose feeling weapon, that the gun feels loose, it doesn't work right. It's because the game is treating it, it's giving it the same reticle friction value as a precision weapon, when in reality, it's an automatic weapon. So let's just change this here, 0 0.11, and poke the changes. Go back to Halo Infinite. Yeah, this feels like the assault rifle. Now, in my opinion, the assault rifle is one of the only good-feeling weapons in Halo Infinite, thanks to its aim assist. I think every other single, every other weapon in the game has something against it, like it, does, it has a usability issue, but the, the assault rifle is one of the only good feeling weapons to use. So yeah, there you have it. The commando rifle feels loose because it doesn't have enough magnetism. Now you might have noticed that the assault rifle in Infinite feels tighter. It's still a bullet hose, but it's an accurate bullet hose. This is because it has a magnetism or reticle friction value less than that of precision weapons historically. Actually, 343 neglects the aim assist values of many weapons, like how the commando has the qualities of a precision weapon when it needs to handle more like an automatic. Honestly, I just miss and appreciate how Halo CE through Reach and 4 all fundamentally had the same system using the same units and values, like how reticle friction and magnetism were understood in degrees. In the end, here's the problem. 
The aim assist systems of Halo Infinite are entirely new. The system that 343 built from scratch misses the context and nuance of the original Blam engine and disregards the doctrine that Halo fans have become accustomed to. Reticle friction, or magnetism angle, has been specifically changed to the point that it ceases to exist because it doesn't serve the purpose it was created for in the first place. Because of these changes, adhesion takes an entirely discrete function. In Halo Infinite, actually acquiring and getting on target with a controller is less fluid and tactile because the game gives you no help at all. It's only once you're already on target does Infinite activate aim assist, which expressly negates player control. Adhesion in Halo Infinite technically has the same tag value as MCC, but Infinite is more reliant on it. In a nutshell, it's harder to get on target in Infinite, it's harder to correct your aim in Infinite, and if you want to take your reticle off target for any reason, Infinite will fight you on that too. Once enemies have your reticle, it's a struggle to exert any control, and this is why Infinite feels stiff and unresponsive. It's because Infinite doesn't help you control the game, it takes control of the game. Thank you very much for watching. I know we didn't talk much about how mouse and keyboard or adhesion isolates controllers from Infinite's jiggly movement, but I want to do two entire videos, one on the differences of keyboard and mouse versus controller, and another on bullet magnetism. So yeah, this video was more for the controller users, but long story short, Halo Infinite nerfs the type of aim assist that M and K controller both get, while focusing on the aim exclusive to controller. This leaves mouse and keyboard worse off, and I personally prefer mouse and keyboard, so it's definitely coming. I hope to see you all next time, and thank you so much for all the support on these videos. Liking, commenting, and of course subscribing. We hit 100 subscribers in the first month, which is ridiculous, so I owe everyone a huge thank you. This video took some more time to get out because it was difficult to structure, assemble the relevant footage, and of course, learn how to mod Halo. I'd like to give my personal thanks to the individuals of both Assembly and the Infinite Runtime Tag Viewer, both of which will be linked on GitHub in the description below. Also, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it'll be there as well. Until next time, thank you very much for being a part of this community.